the walking dead virus. How does it work? How do you get infected? Well, we answered that in part one on how the walking dead zombie virus works. So click here on the video in the links in the description box to go watch it. But this is part two. The questions we've all had are about to be answered. Like, can someone be immune? So stick around and find out on today's episode of Zombie Survival Labs. Welcome to Zombie Survival Labs, a show here on YouTube where you can learn a thing or two about how to survive the zombie apocalypse. My name is Tyler and this is part two on how the Walking Dead zombie virus works. We're answering a lot of questions on today's episode, like how did the virus spread so quickly? Do zombies have super senses? Is it possible that someone could be immune? Can animals like bears and dogs come back as a zombie? Those are all about to be answered. But before we get into that, today's video was made possible and sponsored by Death to Zombies Coffee. Ever try to talk to your girlfriend in the morning and be met with a blood-curdling cry from the depths of hell? It's called zombie brain. Mama said to never hit a girl. She said nothing about sending a demon back to hell. Or you can make her some coffee cousins deaths of zombies coffee. The cure for zombie brain and crazy girlfriend syndrome. It's the world's smoothest, most delicious, 100% Arabica organic coffee on the market. Hell, maybe Laura from The Walking Dead might have been somewhat tolerable if she had been drinking some Death of Zombies coffee. Or at least been able to keep an eye on Carl a little bit better. Carl? Carl's gone. Like, how do you lose your kid that often? It's a zombie apocalypse and you got Carl out there running around playing with the undead. Like, come on. So go to deathzombies.com and get your cure for zombie brain today or click the link in the description box. Death of Zombies coffee. Coffee to die for. Or to give to your girlfriend so she doesn't kill you. With all that aside, it's time to dive deep into The Walking Dead and learn more about the zombie virus. So the first question we need to ask them to know how the virus spreads from part one is how quickly will it spread? To answer that, we need to know the how and the where. How the initial virus spreads, which we dubbed the resurrection virus, isn't really made clear in the show. But what we do know is that everyone has the virus. And for everyone to have the virus, it means that if it was waterborne, it would spread too slowly. The same goes for foodborne and direct person to person transmission, which leaves one option that the virus could have spread so quickly and that's airborne transmission. Cough, sneeze, or even talk to someone in a room full of people and everyone could potentially get the virus. And since the virus shows no symptoms, nobody realizes it, which means no one's being treated for it, further spreading the virus at a rapid rate. But where would the virus have to start to spread so quickly that the world can fall apart? The answer just might blow your mind. If some mad scientist created said airborne zombie virus, the place they would have to release it is Atlanta, Georgia, where the first four seasons of The Walking Dead took place. This isn't just a coincidence though. The writers of The Walking Dead knew exactly what they were doing. Atlanta, Georgia has the busiest airport in the world, having flights not only connected to everywhere in the US, but everywhere in the world. And since all it takes is talking in a room to infect everyone else, the virus will spread fast, like very fast. And once someone dies in any way, they'll become a zombie and the apocalypse has started. Because of Matt from Game Theory, we know that in just seven days, 50% of the US population will become zombies. And in 41 days, 99% of the population will become zombies. So when Rick woke up from his coma two months later and Georgia was pretty much a zombie wasteland, it's actually pretty accurate. And a zombie virus spreading that quickly might seem impossible, but when you take into the account that no one shows symptoms, it actually makes sense. And now you have the fastest spread of a virus ever recorded in human history. But now that we know how fast a zombie virus like that can spread, it begs another question. Can someone be immune? This can be a tricky question to answer because we're still trying to figure out what it takes to make someone immune to certain viruses. Luckily though, it can still be answered. It turns out that recent studies have come out to show that some people can be immune to HIV. I didn't believe it at first, but there's actually a lot of research on this. This is because of a mutation called Delta 32, which keeps a protein called CCR5 from rising to the top of the immune system's T cells. Scientists are trying to figure out right now how to give this mutation to other people who don't have it, which gives us some promising hope that some people might be immune to the zombie virus. In part one, we theorized that the protein keratin is what was infected from the zombie virus. If that's true, some people might have a mutation that doesn't allow the virus to attach onto said protein. So yeah, there's actually a chance some people might be immune to the zombie virus. And spoiler alert, if you've been watching Fear the Walking Dead, this actually has kind of been answered, but we're still somewhat uncertain. But another crazy thing is that a fetus can actually develop its own immunity to certain viruses. The reason that we give infants vaccines is because injecting them with a weakened or dead virus actually helps them build an immunity to it. 
It's actually a way to help an infant's immunity create defenses to defend itself against viruses. It's why influenza, HPV, and polio aren't as big of a deal anymore. So seriously, give your kids vaccines. You're not a doctor. You don't know what's best for them medically. But also, if a pregnant woman was to say have said zombie virus, there's a chance that the infant could actually be, while extremely small, immune to the zombie virus. Meaning that Judith might actually be immune. It's a very small chance, but it, it's still a chance. Which could be why the TV show kept her around as long as they did, because maybe they have a plan of introducing that somehow. Or they didn't want to kill a baby on TV. Could be either. Probably because they didn't want to kill her on TV, but there's a chance. So we answered how fast it can spread and if someone can be immune. But a question that comes up a lot is can animals be infected and turn into zombies also? If you thought zombie people were terrifying, think of a zombie bear. That's the stuff that nightmares are made out of. Well, the answer is yes, but no at the same time. Humans have a different genetic makeup than animals, so viruses that might affect us could affect animals differently or just not at all. With something like a zombie virus, instead of turning your dog into a zombie, it's more likely that it's going to kill the dog or just not affect it at all. So animals can be infected, just not zombie infected, if that makes any sense. This is all just theoretical though, I'm not a scientist, so I could be wrong, so don't be raging out on me. Still though, probably no zombie animals will be walking around. Another popular question is do zombies have super senses? People think this because it seems that a zombie can hear a pin drop and pinpoint exactly where it is. But the short answer is no, N not at all. It feels like this because they can smell out the living from the dead, but that's not very impressive at all. You at home can smell the difference between a fresh steak and one that's rotting. Just like the survivors in The Walking Dead are constantly making references to how bad the zombies smell. But it seems like zombies have super senses because their way of thinking is extremely primal. Find food? Eat food. Living people are analyzing a ton of information at any given time. We hear a sound, analyze it to figure out what exactly it is, then determine if it's important information or not. Zombies, however, don't do that. They hear it, they go to it, simple. But what zombie virus questions are burning in your mind still? Comment hashtag zombie survival labs followed by your question, and if I make a part three, I'll include it in the next video. And go to deathofzombies.com and get your cure for zombie brains today. My name is Tyler, and you're one step closer to surviving the zombie apocalypse. See you later. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching today's episode of Zombie Survival Labs. If you haven't hit that subscribe button already, hit that sucker. You'll be notified when I make more Zombie Survival Guide videos. Also, hit that like button down below if you like today's video. If not, you ain't got to. And if you want to leave a comment down below in the comment section, you can go ahead and do that. Maybe on the comment question of the day. And make sure you put hashtag Zombie Survival Labs on it so I know you're answering it. And if you want to hit one of these three videos on the side to go watch them, you can do that too. And don't forget to go deathofzombies.com to get your coffee today. My name is Tyler, and I'll see you guys next time.